confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. We are saved by believing. Acts 16, 31. They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. We are saved by hope. Romans 8, 24. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. That what, what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? We are saved by the enduring to the end. Matthew 10, 22. Where ye shall be hated of all men for thy man's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now I'm going to ask a question. Of those 12 items, which one can we leave out? Which one can we leave out? And if I were to talk to almost anybody that goes to church today and say, which one of those 12 items are not necessary? I, I, I will get the answer, well, they're all necessary. We, we need all those in order to be able to receive salvation. And I'm going to read one more scripture to you. And if I were to read this to the people, I'd get a different answer. In 1 Peter 3, chapter 20th verse, We sometimes were disobedient when, when once the long supper of God waited in the days of Noah. When the ark was at preparing, were in few that its eight souls were saved by water. But like fear we to even baptism, doth also not save us. Not the putting away the tools of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus. Notice what Peter says. Baptism doth also not save us. If you mention that to almost anybody in the world that goes to church, other than the Christian church, Church of Christ, and the very first thing that they will shout at, well, baptism does not save. But the Bible says it does. The Bible says it does. And as far as I'm concerned, as far as my understanding is concerned, baptism is the immersion of a repentant person in water for the remission of their sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to stop right there just for a moment. I, I want to make another clarification here. I do not sin and judgment of a person. I, I recognize a person's love to God and I appreciate that. I recognize a person's dedication to God and I appreciate that. I, I recognize a person's love of the Savior and I appreciate that. But I wonder how many people are actually erring in their salvation because they have purposely left out one or two items that the Bible says is necessary. I have no choice in my mind but to preach what the Bible teaches. I have no choice in my mind to accept exactly what the Bible says. And as far as I'm concerned, there is not one person from the establishment of the church in Acts, the second chapter, until the coming of Jesus Christ in the very last chapter, that was not saved until they were baptized in Jesus Christ. As I said, I'm not sitting in judgment. I'm just preaching what I believe about the Bible. I'd like to read some scripture to you about baptism. And when we put this together, I think you will see what the Bible teaches about that. On the day of Pentecost, Acts, the second chapter, we read that down in the 37th verse of that particular chapter, when Peter concluded his sermon, it says the people were pricked in their hearts and they cried out, well, men and brethren, what must we do? I want to read you the answer that Jesus gave. He said, repent <clears throat> and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, why? According to Peter's words, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Spirit. We are baptized into Christ for the remission of sin. Or they have made all kinds of arguments to say that that's not what it says. Which is exactly what it says. Exactly. Paul was talking about his conversion to King Agrippa. The 22nd chapter of the book of Acts, the 16th verse, he talked about Ananias coming to him. 
And Ananias said, look at Paul. And said, and Saul, watch here yourself. Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. I don't know how many of you have ever seen the Ryrie study Bible. I know this for a fact because I looked it up one time. And down in the footnotes of the Bible, it says, and by the way, somebody I was talking to about baptism referred to this. That's how I saw it first. And down in the footnotes, Ryrie makes the comment, baptism does not wash away sin. I would rather believe what Paul says than what the Ryrie study Bible notes say. Romans, the sixth chapter, verses three through six. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism in the death, and like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing that the old man is crucified with him. Old man is crucified in baptism. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Interesting. Galatians of the third chapter, the 27th verse. For as many as us, as many of you who have been baptized into Christ, have put on and by the way, that's the only verse of Scripture that I can find that emphasizes that we have put on Christ. 1 Peter 3, 21, which we all also talked about, the light finger went to baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that, by the way, is an answer to the Gnostics. The Gnostics said, or used to teach that if they were to come in contact with somebody that wasn't a Christian, they had to be rebaptized because you put away the filth of the flesh. And this, Paul, Peter is answering that. Titus 3 5 is very interesting. I've already read it. But you notice, notice what Titus 3 5 says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. If my understanding of baptism is right, and I notice the if, the washing of regeneration is baptism. And, and when we are baptized, we renew the Holy Spirit. Notice Paul does not include baptism as a word. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. How? With the washing of water through the word, which he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that it should, not, that it should be holy and without blemish. Now, brothers and sisters, while I firmly believe in what the scriptures say, I'm not going to prohibit God from saving somebody that has not been baptized. If he wants to do it, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice. And my prayer has always been that God will save people in their error as he will save me if I'm in error. And I'll guarantee you as many times I've been in error. That why jeopardize the greatest goal that you can have, that of eternal life with heaven, by not completely surrender your life to the will of God. Why jeopardize what Jesus paid for when he died on the cross and rose from the dead? If you have not been fully obedient to God, if you have not followed the total teaching of the Word of God, we do encourage you to come as we sing the invitation. Believing, repenting, confessing, being baptized, that you might live a life of Christ.
Чего вы сняли?